Hey guys, what's going on? It is uh, class number five, and um, yeah, tonight is a special night. This is our our critique night. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna really take a look at our our work and the icons that we created, and then we're gonna talk about um, a couple little things, housekeeping things. I know some people had questions about how to get our stuff zipped up. Um, and then uh, published to Noun Project. I did get a couple emails from you guys saying, hey, you know, it went in, it's being curated and all that stuff. That's great. I'm glad you got to jump on it and you sort of jumped in head first. Um, but we'll work collectively and see how that all goes. So I'm going to head over right now to my courses and we're going to take a look at the work that you guys did. I took a look earlier and I was pretty impressed. Um, thank you guys for for putting that together. Very cool of you. Um, all right, let's see. I'm going to go over to my courses too. Cool. All right, so yeah, I just did a quick scroll through. So yeah, we wanted to post a um, a JPEG here, right? A save for web um, in devices, or just save for web if you're in Creative Cloud, um, and then also to upload um, the SVG files. Okay. Um, because that way we can tell, you know, if you've uh, ungrouped everything and, you know, if you've got all your stuff punched out correctly um, using, wow, well, lots of good comments. Way to go, guys. Um, all that good stuff, right, so that you have exactly what Noun Project needs and you are good to go. All right, so first JPEG up is Mr. Jason Whitcop. So, um, Jason, thank you so much, man, for putting these together. You've definitely been working hard, and I see you took a lot of the feedback, um, and these are looking really sharp. Okay, so first thing that I noticed um, is your mouse, right? That is the only icon that I see that's sort of unique from the rest. Like I said, it's okay, um, you know, if you want to sort of try a few different styles. You know, I would say then, like, you know, keep doing a few more this way, or maybe offer folks a mouse that has that high contrast, like you're doing so well with these other pieces. Like your flag, man, that's awesome. You did a great job with that. Yeah, you really pulled that off well. I got to show you how to um, play with the star a little bit because I'm looking really close and I can see your star isn't sort of straight um, lined from the little uh, rays sticking out. It has a little bit of a of a width to it, but that's okay. I mean, I'm hardly noticing it, but I notice because I'm an Illustrator user. Um, Candle's pretty good. Um, you know, I think there's definitely some contrast things and things you can play with on the top, right? So, like, we can kind of see the wick. I would maybe extend it a little more. Um, if you want to just keep it the way it is, but if you want to show the top part of that candle, there's a way to do that, right, with line work and that sort of thing. Um, but cool, definitely cool. I think your beret is right on righteous. I'm just loving that you got all the details in there and everything. Um, I would say, you know, there's a way to smooth out the lines a little bit, but I know a beret is very sort of, you know, but remember, right, it's an icon, so simplification and not too much detail, like too much actual detail um, is really key because then it just communicates what it is, right, as opposed to saying how it is, right? Um, cool, and then you've got your uh, your stripes, right? I believe that's sergeant, I'm thinking, maybe. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, I apologize. Um, but yeah, these look great, solid, for sure. Very cool. So yeah, the one thing I think is just the, the main issue is just this mouse, um, but it's cool. I think showing the wire here is really cool, and it's kind of a funky, futuristic shape, very Apple-like, cool, very cool. All right, keeping scrolling down. All right, let's see. All right, so we're up to Jen now. All right, so Jen, thank you for your write-up on that. So what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm we're going to look quick now, um, giving you just sort of verbal initial reaction feedback with everybody, and then I'm going to go in and really look at what you've done, read what you've said, and then I will give you a grade. Right, this is our first project, so this is um, yeah, this is this is you know a big grade for us, and um, yeah, but it looks like you guys have, r have risen to the occasion. Okay, so this does not look like a save for web JPEG, unless you are shaking your computer as you saved it, perhaps. This looks like maybe some handy-dandy uh, cell phone work here. I'm imagining that you might not have been able to have figured out the save for web, so you improvised. So I'm, I'm very happy that you did that. Way to go, right? You've now reached the sort of moment for the assignment. Cool deal. Uh, but we're going to definitely teach you how to do save for web so you're prepared, right? You always want to have a nice, clean JPEG to share. Um, yeah, I got to be perfectly honest. I'm. I got to see these solid. I, I mean, cool for getting them in, but yeah, this is too shaky for me to really evaluate detail and all the stuff. Um, so, but I think the owl is in a good spot. 
All right, your eyeball is definitely in a much better spot. Uh, looks like here a little connectivity issue um, between the eyelash and the eye. I think it's definitely possible to, you know, just bump this down and have it connect. Or, alternatively, you could leave a little space between the lashes and the eyes. That's, like, very common in um, icons, right, is to sort of have that, that space. And uh, yeah, a couple little cleanup things, like the uh, dropper bottle, um, you know, there's a really great technique where you can draw half of it and then reflect the other side. Um, I think I demonstrated that in that first tutorial with the martini glass, I believe. Um, oh, no, because I did it with triangles. All right. Well, anyway, um, I can show you that as well. So bug me about doing the reflection because you'll get a perfectly sh um, balanced bottle by drawing one half and one half only. And honestly, looking at this now, I don't even know if you need eyelashes. I mean, I feel like you have enough of an eyeball graphic here and we're showing a drop about to, you know, right on it. And I think that's enough. You know, the eyelashes might be sort of extra detail that may help us communicate uh, that this is a feminine eye, right, or just a, maybe a male with very um, lush eyelashes. Maybe he wants the London look. Um, guy liner, right? It's, you know, rock and roll. Um, but, you know, something to think about as far as those details are concerned. Um, cool. All right, and then we've got here... Uh, we've got our other icons. Gosh. Okay, you're going to have to refresh my memory on what these are. Let me scroll up here real quick and try and remember. I am so sorry. Oh, right, your Mahjong tiles. Okay, cool. Okay, well, sorry. You know, I know that I've looked at these in the past. No insult to you. But, uh, you know, you're trying to pull off Mahjong tiles, um, which are hard. I could just have a low literacy in Mahjong tiles. Um, my mom played it as a kid but I did not recognize them instantly. Um, but, no, I mean, knowing now what they are, they've got the shape. Uh, the designs, I need to confirm, you know, are, are you, know, you want to find, like, the most iconic designs. Um, but all in all, I think this is, this is pretty solid. Uh, you know, you could play with this. You've got the line art style. You could play where it's, you know, all black, and then you punch everything out in white. That's very much possible, too. But cool, right? you got some Mahjong tiles. Um, I know Mahjong 2 is like a 3D game, so like, I know perspective is weird in icons sometimes, but there might be a way for you to show that these are stacked, perhaps, because I know you stack the tiles up. Wow, I'm digging deep here. Um, okay, cool, right, but, you know, we want to make sure, and again, that icons aren't misconstrued. I, I told you guys that I submitted an icon that was of that, like, pink hotel that's in Uptown Charlotte that has the pink glass windows that's just outside of the Beltway. Um, and the noun project told me that it looked like a server. So, <laughs> which I, I promptly replied, yes, it real looks like a server in real life. So, yes, uh, I don't know. Uh, but anyway, right, we want these, these things to be sort of super fast, um, communicating what they're trying to do. Okay, and then it looks like here you've got a horse, right? We've got the overall shape of a horse, and you've brought in some of the hair, and then I guess that part of the horse that we, uh, we use, right? Um, California crown. I now know what that is. Okay. Gosh. Sorry. I saw the like angry owner on TV and I was like, oh, that's what that was. So, sorry. I When I lived in Saratoga Springs, I was much more up on horse racing. Not anymore. Sorry. Um, cool. All right. But I think, you know, overall, little tweaks here and there and then we got to get you on the save for web um, and devices, right, so you can get things going. Cool. But good first crack for sure. All right, let's go now to Alexis. All right, all right, Alexis. It looks like your image is stretched of some sort, maybe, because things appear to be just a little bit sort of strange. With, but it could be that it's just the the browser breaking up your stuff. Um, but good for you. you. You've you've had some some solid pieces for a while. I was definitely on the last go around. Um, I was impressed with that. You had a consistency of style. You were using the picto guy, right? The sort of floating circle on the body. Um, that sort of thing. Um, one thing that um, I can uh, definitely share with you is you've drawn your picto guy from scratch, so proportionally he's kind of in a thick and thin in different areas, right? Um, which could be part of his character for sure. Um, like when we see the Olympics every year, or every uh, or two years for winter and then two years for for summer, we see that like the host country takes on their sort of style with how they're going to approach it. So that's fine, um, right? If you're going to make that argument. But um, I've got a really cool trick using um, the stroke 
right? And then rounded, capped lines to make picto people. It's a pretty simple technique. And then you can bend the guy doing any sort of which way and everything. You can, you know, have him do the robot, and it's really cool. Um, but I'm definitely reading these, right? You've got the, the sword from Minecraft, which you sort of no longer doing 8-bit, but that's cool. Um, your video game player, rad. Um, right, your puppeteer, your stapler, and then your potter. Right, so I think good for you. You've got all the things on a flat surface, which we talked about last time. Um, I'm just hoping that your JPEG is not like in real life this way, that these things are, you know, proportionate and that sort of thing. I know you got this. I know you got it. Cool. Well, very nice work. Um, rolling on now to Logan. All right, Logan. Cool deal. Good. You've taken advice, right, on the things that you're doing. I think everything here still reads very strongly. Um, you know, I think stylistically you're in a few directions, but not horrible. Um, you know, I think this is going to be the one ideograph, right, that we sort of have to really, like, you'll have to just perhaps explain. But these will come with a, um, you know, with a label and, and tag. So if you've been through the process already, you saw that you label the symbol and then you also give it tags, right, like keywords that um, are associated with it, okay? So cool. You got some wine, right? Photographer, for sure. Um, Right, we've got a, a painter painting, right? So we're talking about fine art paint. Uh, we've got our flower, but it's actually a daisy. Um, I'll tell you a story about flowers and noun project in a little bit. And then, of course, our owl, right? Which uh, is very much in a stylized way. You got the eyes are great. Now it's like totally icon style. Yeah, you got it well out of the cartoon realm, which I think, you know, I'm sorry, I was a little worried about before, but I think you, you, you've reacted well to this. So, way to go. Good stuff. Um, and again, like I've been saying with other folks, maybe think about the daisy, the owl, and the photographer being in this sort of high contrast style. You know, you can experiment with that and just see, or see how it goes. I think that'd be fun. All right, let's see here. Uh, what do we got next? Okay, Blair. Blair with your chairs. I just saw um, Professor Fry and Professor Allen today um, at Queens. I was up there for roar. I was roaring with the freshmen. Um, so it's pretty cool. Few new media students, which is pretty rad. Definitely, people are pumped up. Um, okay, so really quick, um, I to actually told um, them about this project, and um, yeah, they were pretty excited. They were like, "Oh, there's so many chairs we could make!" So yeah, there's potential there, Blair. So jump on that. <laughs> all right. So looking through, all right. So the thing that we're still sort of uh, approaching with this now is that you've got chairs from all sorts of angles, right? So. Um, while that's cool, right, we said stylistically we can sort of play with these different things, and I know that some of these chairs are hard to represent because their details might be on an angle that wouldn't, um, you know, wouldn't be common throughout them all. Um, I would try. Try to create like a single set um, of icons. I would say going forward from now that shows like your, like the side profile, or I guess that would be the front elevation or the side elevation, right, if we're using interior design and architectural language or from this sort of three-quarter, almost axonometric, isometric uh, perspective, right, not quite 35-35 uh, angle, um, or the front view, right, the front elevation just slightly lifted in front. I would, I would pick one and go with it. It's looking like, well, you got a mix of the both. So I would say, you know, if you're feeling saucy, and if you wanted to put out a great icon set that I think would be pretty legendary, um, gosh, like, you can make prints out of these. I mean, man, I, I'd buy one. Um, where you would feature all of these chairs in a, in a similar fashion, always from that side angle, always from the three-quarter angle, always from the front, right? And then stylistically always keeping that similarity going throughout. But I think totally a worthwhile approach. Um, very cool that you did these. I'm happy that you sort of brought in what you're doing into the mix. So definitely fun and definitely potential moving forward. But like I said, try to try to maybe, you know, if you're pushing, try to get one style, um, you know, you're – all silhouette or the black and white or the line art and you know, keep that going. I really like your Barcelona chair and it's amazing that I know that that was a Barcelona chair. So fabulous on that. Let's see here. What else we got here? Okay, so Hector. All right. Hector, so tiny, man. Oh, it's probably because you did Safer Web and you did the smaller JPEGs. Okay. No, I completely get it. All right. Uh, let's see what we can do here. Um, Oh, I think I'm getting on to some stuff here. 
All right, let's get back to, to what this is and see if we can just can't zoom in the page and then uh, take a look that way. I think that's going to be uh, pretty rad. All right, let's see. Scrolling down, scrolling down. All right, if I can do open image and new tab, all icons. Yeah, I'll just save this to the desktop real quick to take a look. Maybe it's a bigger image. No, hard to see. Oh, Hector, you're killing us, man. So hard to see this. Um, all right, well, let me uh, let me get the screen switched over so you guys can see. Hey. All right, really quick, we'll go back. I didn't mean to put this, like, glow blur filter on here. It's like, oh, like wedding pictures. Yeah, not today. Um, all right, so let's check out all icons from Hector. Uh, these are pixelated, man, so it's going to be a little hard to see exactly what you got going on. Oh, boy, these are tough to make out. Um, Hector, please, can you upload for me again, um, before we finish class tonight, a uh, new Save for Web um, JPEG? And I'm going to show you how to increase the size. Okay, so, so hold on. We'll talk about that. We'll get that going. All right, so back to uh, my courses. Let's see if anybody else has uh, posted their goodies. Okay, so we can do review. Like I said, we're doing an informal just kind of look right now at everything that you guys got going on. Um, and then I'm going to sit uh, over this week and really get into um, what it is. Okay. All right, so I'm refreshing. Anything new? Please, please, new stuff. All right, we're seeing here what's going on. It looks like some new comments. No, that's it. Okay. So, Will, your stuff, you got to also post a, um, you got to post a JPEG here. Okay, so that's what everybody needs to do. All right, so, all right, so we've got stuff from Hector, Blair, Logan, Alexis. All right, Jen, you're going to get me new images, save for web, JPEG, which I'm going to show you guys how to do. Well, wow, Logan, you're killing it with the comments. Way to go. Okay, Jason. And that appears to be it. Yeah, for now. Okay, that's not everybody, guys. I'm wondering, I'm wondering what's going on. I haven't heard from everybody. Those who had questions or problems I, I've uh, communicated with. Uh, I'm sure maybe some of you still have issues, but, you know, we're... It's due, right? It's 6.30 now, so, um, yeah, please do that, all right? It'd be uh, awful if for some reason uh, you bomb the first project. That would be uh, not a good good reflection on your scholastic abilities, which I know all of them are amazing. All right, so, um, yeah, let's head over to Illustrator, all right? Let's talk about, um, you know, the stuff that we're going to be doing, all right, getting our stuff ready for Noun Project. So I don't know about you guys, but I have had a crazy busy week between um, Roar at Queens um, with the freshmen and then just some freelance stuff and then all sorts of stuff. But it's been good. I, I, I've worked hard and I feel accomplished. And, um, yeah, I've got some new work that I can show you guys um, that was uh, created this week. Sorry, I'm just stalling while I switch over to, uh, to my screen. Gosh, hang on. Sorry, eventually I'll learn how this all works. Okay, here we go. All right, I'm going to flip over to Illustrator away from uh, my courses now. And, yeah, we're going to get going. Okay. All right. So here we are, right? We're in a blank uh, Illustrator document. And uh, perhaps, let's see, maybe I can open up my, um, yeah, let's get the icons from last time. So this is my file from last time, right? You guys remember we uh, I quickly made with shapes, right? Explaining the Pathfinder, um, how we're using, creating this building, this smartphone, and then my martini glass. Okay. All right. So I want to show you just uh, guys real quick the uh, overall export technique. Okay, for doing uh, save for web and devices, right? Which is the old way of saying what's now in Illustrator. Excuse me, just save for web. They used to call it devices, I guess, when mobile stuff first started coming out, but now it's just safe for web. So, um, so what we'll need to do is go up to File, and then 
safe for web. Okay, and that's going to be where we sort of set up uh, what we're going to be doing. But we have to do something in Illustrator first before that sort of makes a difference. So if I click Save for Web, right, you can take a look. We originally set up our artboard to be 100 by 100 pixels, which is tiny, right? So, yeah, Illustrator is going to give us a 100 by 100 pixel sized JPEG, okay? But what you can do is um, inside, in here, Illustrator, there's this image size, right? When you sort of choose JPEG from this list up here, right? These are web formats. Um, right down here, you'll see image size says new size with 100 by 100, and that's 100%. So if I made this 500%, and then click somewhere else, right? Uh, oh, I believe, sorry, we have to click done. Um, not sure why that does that, or why it didn't just come up. All right, hang on a sec. So save for web and devices, 500%. All right, and yes, are we going to update? Yeah, there we go. Okay, all right. So you got to click up here um, in these other boxes. When you hit done, it just goes away. It doesn't auto-update. So that's still kind of small. So if we did a thousand percent, okay, and then clicked up here, all right. Notice it still maintains quality, right? So Illustrator has in here that it can take your vector image, which is resolution independent, meaning it doesn't need. Um, it, it could, it's huge, right? It's, it can be printed any size. It's points and lines, essentially, not pixels. Um, but then to convert it to a pixel-based image, well, it can do a lot of sizes because you know sixteen hundred percent is the zoom scale for. For Illustrator, it's like 6,000 DPI. It's ridiculous. So if we did 1,000%, it's 1,000 by 1,000 pixels. That's very big, right? We don't even need that. But, um, yeah, here's how you now increase the size of that graphic. Um, and at which point, if you got it to a nice size, you can see down here on the bottom, let me lift up my screen, um, right? It's at 100%. You can see, like, how it's going to work. And you can also see the uh, JPEG size. So right here, this tiny type, it says JPEG 31.71K, right, kilobytes. So that's how long it, uh, that's the file size, and that's sort of, you know, when uh, somebody is looking at this on the web or a mobile device, you get a good sense of how much image um, file size they're going to be downloading, okay? So for us, right, it's like as long as we're under, you know, 500K, we're good. Under a meg is, even, you know, is really sort of the, the real ceiling that you want to adhere to. But in this case, we've now scaled up, uh, we checked out some of these things as far as what we're doing, right? We went up a thousand percent, and we had to click in these other boxes here to sort of take the focus off, and then it reformatted um, the image to be exactly what we needed. Okay. Now um, this quality here, very high, right? Um, if you look, there's like a few quality settings that you can do as well as numbers. So if I go to low, right? Let's see how it will render. Oh, it's not too bad. Wow, that's actually. Horrible, that that's still looking really good. <laughs> that is bizarre. Well, let's see. Maybe I just didn't do it. Let's see if it updates. No, it's still, wow, even at bad quality, it's still horrible. So this goes to show you 38K. Yeah, okay. So the quality on this, because it's black and white, doesn't matter so much. But rule of thumb, okay, here's what I really want to communicate to you is very high and high. Right, are the places you want to be, because what you'll what you'll see here in this space is that stuff will start to take on, um, it'll start to pixelate, right? Especially when you have like graphics and stuff that you're working on, you'll see the pixelation occur. So the balance on JPEGs is you want maximum beauty, so no pixels, no dithering, right? No sort of uh, issues, and minimum file size. So you know I'm keeping my eye on this 31K, right? I want that number to go down. So you want to get a balance between small and beautiful. And that's great, right? So very high at 80% is pretty common. It's going to work for most of your images. Okay. And then we'll hit save. All right. And this is going to be now the JPEG that we save for our project. So, um, yeah, this is my noun project um, folder. So I'm just saving all my icons on here. And this will be what I then upload to my courses. So this will be Martini Icon. Right? And then save. Cool. So the Illustrator file is still intact. It didn't change any of the dimensions of our original graphic. None of that's changed, right? It's still to the standards of um, out of uh, uh, noun project. But you know, we we now had control over outputting our file. So, all right. Let's see here. Um, so in my folder now, I've got that file somewhere. I'm 
I need to just do my desktop. Yeah, hang on one second here. Sorry. There we go. Feedback loop. Cool. All right. So now in project folder, right? Got lots of things open here. Here it is, right? Martini icon. And if I, on my Mac, I can do this. I can do spacebar, which is a quick view. There it is. I can see it kind of full size, right? It is a big image and um, it's ready for prime time. And it looks good, right? It's nice black and white, super stark contrast. Loving it. All right. So um, that, folks, is how you output JPEGs, okay, um, from your images. Now, some of you may have built several separate files, or you may be working in one file, right? So I had shown you guys last time what it was like to work in one file. So if you take the uh, icon, notice I took the black arrow, drew a box around the icon that I'm interested in moving, and I just pick it up and move it over to the side. And now I'll bring my building into the mix. Okay. Now another cool thing, um, I taught you guys last week about the shift key and how like awesome it is. Well, when you're moving things around and dragging them with the black arrow, if you hold the shift key, look okay, at them now, you can lock things to sort of like, you know, um, like common angles. So, right, this is 90, right? 0, 180, and then 45. So this is just a great way. So if you've got like type or something on a baseline, things are aligned at the bottom, if you start to click and drag and then hold shift, it will stay on a baseline, right? And it won't deviate. It'll sort of snap to. So take a second and just like, if you have any graphics open in Illustrator, um, even a square, start to click and drag it, but then put your finger on the shift key and watch that it now doesn't sort of respond to your hand um, as sort of, um, you know, as sensitively as it would be if you didn't hold the shift key. So it's a really great thing to have um, as far as, you know, keeping your graphics aligned. So this guy's a little bit bigger than the uh, sort of buffer that Noun Project would like. So I'm going to do a little center scale here real quick. All right, remember center scale. Click on your object, shift and option. Make sure that you're on one of the um, scalable arrows, and then you can center scale like that. And that's why this is rad, because I got it uh, scaled and centered, but then I don't want to get it out of this space and realign it again. So center scale rules. That's where it really rules. All right, so now... Right, we're gonna go to Save for Web. There it is, my building in all its glory. We'll go to 1,000%. There it is, nice and big. All right, 30K, cool, save. And we'll try again, right? We'll say building icon JPEG, okay? And this is just for previews, right? This has nothing to do with um, creating the uh, SVG, the Scalable Vector Graphic for Noun Project's website, but just for demonstration. Right? These are the kind of images that, um, for those folks who are going to be taking um, interactive and web design in the new media design major, we build our portfolio website as a project in that class. So these would be things that I would say, hey, like I, I, one of the assignments is gather up all the work you have, and this would be a great set of icons to show. Right? I've got icons on my website. Right? I love showing that stuff off. So um, yeah. So. Uh, creating the JPEG for that, as well as uh, s submitting work for my courses, is critical, right? JPEGs happen every day, so yeah, cool. All right, we'll get the last one here just to round out the practice. There it is. Okay, file, save for web. Changing the uh, the width. Notice I can just do one box. This little chain here, that's called constraints proportions. A lot of things in, in Adobe products have that chain, which allows you to lock the scale. So if I go 1,000% here, it's going to do 1,000% there because it was originally a square. But if I did like 640 by 480, and then I can go up to 800 by 600, and then 1024 by 768, and then, yes, 1920 by 1080, all those wonderful resolutions, good times. All right, boom, there it is, right, my iPhone ready for prime time. Except when I looked at my iPhone the other day, I noticed I didn't put the top button. So, yeah, this isn't very accurate. But, yeah, don't hate. It's all good. It's just for an example. So this is an iPhone icon. Save. All right, so my three that I did for demonstration have now all been saved for web, right? They're all JPEGs. They all are sitting in my noun project folder right here. Right? So I've got building icon, iPhone icon, martini icon. Okay. So if I were um, uh, uh, in the class like you guys are, I would go up and right now just post these. 
They're really small and just ready to go in addition to my SVGs. So for those folks um, who are having trouble doing safer web and devices and very MacGyver-like resorted to using the cell phone camera to snap some pics, good for you for being resourceful, right? But uh, yeah, here's how you do it, right? Now you can um, uh, do the correct method and then post the stuff that you have. Now, um, one other thing was I wanted to show you guys the um, reflection um, creation of icons really quick. This might help some of you guys if you want to tighten up what it is that you're doing, okay? So what we do with that is we draw half of the item that we're going to be working with, and then we do something called reflect and then flip, right? And those two things um, will produce a very well-balanced symmetrical icon, which is rad. So here we go. All right, we're going to do that kind of... Um, uh, uh, eyedropper bottle, right, that we saw, um, I believe it was, I forget whose icons those were. I'm so sorry. Um, yeah, all right. So you guys need to make sure that during the semester you come by and you say hello, all right, just so I know who you are. That would be wonderful. Here we go. So I'm going to take my pen tool, because um, that's kind of critical for this. Shapes are more for, for solid forms, but when doing the half of an icon thing, pen tool's really good. All right, so I'll zoom in and... Here we go. So we're going to do that sort of rounded eyedropper tip thing there. And then I know there's a couple of little sort of divot things for the screw cap. All right. Let me get a little closer here. You guys can just see what I'm doing. Okay. Bam. I'll tighten those up, but for now they're good. All right. We'll make this sort of edge of the bottle. Okay. I know there's this sort of like rounded shoulder on the bottle. I'm getting a little too tight here. Let's see. I got to go like it way out here. Yeah, here we go. Okay, cool. Right, and then I'm going to break the uh, the uh, um, by using the convert anchor point. Right, when we did the cloud exercise. All right, I got to zoom out here. I made that nozzle like mega huge. All right, and then boom, right there. I'm actually done. Okay, I've drawn half of this, like perfectly. There it is. Okay, I've got a thick stroke on it. It's fine. Um, so I'm going to show you the few techniques um, tonight that are going to really take a, a shape, work it in half, and then bring it over to the other side. Okay, so here's what we do to get this going. Mine's not beautiful, I know. Sorry, but just for demonstration purposes. So we select it. Okay, we've got half a shape, and I'll. Um, I didn't mention this here, but I'm using the. Uh, the two-headed arrow, which is the um, toggle or swap fill and stroke. You can see it's showing up right there, right? So what this does is this does outline, inline, outline, inline, right? So if I had a color on here, which right, we're not using color yet, this is what it would do, right? Everybody's disco dancing. Cool, all right, so I'm going to swap so that we have the fill on right now, right? No stroke, but just fill, okay? And how many people remember how to do the um, click copy? right, where we can make a duplicate of something. Okay, I can't see your hands, but I know you're all raising your hands as great students. Yes, we put our uh, pointer finger on the option key. All right, we get that two-headed arrow right there. Okay, and then, right, remember, if I then start clicking and dragging, I can make a duplicate of that. But here's what I want to do. I'm going to drag and then hold the shift key so that I have it aligned and duplicated at the same time. Okay. Perfect. I let go of the mouse first, and then I let go of my option shift key second. Okay, I almost wait an extra moment just so it registers, right? Otherwise, it would just move my thing, and that would be it, and that would not be awesome. All right, problem is both of these shapes are facing the same way. So what do we do? All right, there are tools to handle this. In fact, it is right here, right? It is the reflect tool, okay? So if you're looking for the reflect tool, it's... Um, sort of buried in here a little bit, but it's in the, it's below like the blob brush and yeah, next to a bunch of things that have weird icons, but you can roll over it and it will say reflect tool. It's like, it's two arrows that are, one is filled and one is empty and they're pointing at each other. Okay. And what this does is this will take a graphic and let us literally go and just flip it, right? So that this side is now on this side. Okay. So here's how we do this. All right. And this is going to also involve the shift key because if I just do this freehand, Look what happens. It's freehand, right? I can, I can do that. I can reflect and almost rotate a little bit. But I want it to just reflect perfectly, just like 
that. And yes, sound effects are included. Sorry. So what I do, finger on the shift key, and then I click while my cursor is on top. Uh, notice one thing too, sorry. You have to select this first. Right? Anything you're about to like affect, select first. So we'll get the um, reflect tool. Okay. See, it's telling us there that the O key on your keyboard does reflect. So if you want to be like super savvy, save a ton of time by doing keyboard commands, that's a great way to learn is roll over stuff in uh, any Adobe product and you will see what its key is, its special key. Menus too, right? It tells you what some of these things are. So like, uh, let's see, group is Command G, right? Or Control G on the, on the PC. Yeah, cool. All right, so Reflect Tool. It's selected, right? I've got the Reflect Tool on. I'm putting my finger on the Shift key and I'm gonna sort of just now drag left and right, okay? And as if you notice, I do a little bit, right? It does these sort of like, very much established angles. So um, it, there's a preview of it as you're doing it. So keep that finger on the shift key. Don't let go yet until you get it right. Okay. Boom. There it is. Right. And uh, sorry, Command Z just to back up really fast to show you guys what I'm doing. O key to get reflect tool. So I'm going to do finger on the shift key. And then while my cursor is on here, click and drag to the right. Right. If you just do that, it then reflects your piece perfectly. Awesome. Okay. So now we've got two perfect sides. So if you draw one side, right, the whole point of it is like, doesn't matter how well you draw one side, as long as the other side looks like the other side, then it looks symmetrical and balanced. So here's how you can just sort of like get away with drawing something beautiful. Um, right, we don't all have, you know, a thousand hours of mirror writing, right, which Leonardo da Vinci did, which was backwards writing. He used to do that all the time, and it was legible, believe it or not. Okay, so what we can do now is shift key again, and I'm going to drag my shape into place. And if you notice that, like, when I get it close enough, I get that, that green line in the middle that says intersect, right? That's telling me that the shapes are touching, right, and that they're now in space, and that's awesome. Okay, so we now need to sort of figure out a way to join these into one wonderful shape. There's a lot of ways to actually do this, okay, and I'm going to show you two right now. So first one is if you notice the bottom of these things, right, they're incomplete paths. I stopped the shape at that moment, okay? Aha, so if you're picking up on what I'm putting down, what you can do, grab the pen tool, okay? If you um, roll over that bottom left-hand point, let me show you real, real close up here. Bam, right? I get the spare symbol on my pen tool tool. It's it, in green. It says, hey, this is an anchor point. Okay. And what the spare means is I can continue my line. So if I click this once, it now, anywhere I draw, it will continue that shape. Okay. So I sort of picked up a line and said, all right, we're, we're going to keep working here and do what we got to do. So what I can do, and here's my wonderful, clever way, scroll over to the right. If I roll over this now, I get that little um, well, it's not the circle, but it's a square and a line, which I think means sort of, you know, combined shapes. So that's exactly what's going to happen. So if I click here, pow, it connects and combines the shapes, okay, into one piece. We're not done yet. I'm going to show you the second technique, but wow, it looks good already. Uh, kind of looks like a weird sort of popsicle that went wrong, turned into a robot. But anyway, let's do that one more time. So you can do it the opposite direction as well. Select one side that you want to then continue the path on. Notice the paths come alive, right? They highlight. Now, pen tool, just regular old pen tool, not the, uh, uh, any of the other options that pen tool has. Okay. And then while it's selected, roll over so that you see the, the spare, right, the half slash showing up. Click on it to then tell Illustrator, yeah, I want to continue this path. And then draw where you want it to go. Right? So in this case, I'm rolling over to see that little box show up, click, and I've completed my shape. Okay, It is now one piece. Not quite, but it's close. What we're actually um, seeing here is that it's not totally a complete shape, but that there's, no, there's really just going to be no gaps because the, the two points at the top are so close together, we won't notice. Okay. All right, so what we'll do to fix that top part all right, and notice I'm zoomed in 6,400%. That's close. All right, is I've got these two points here, right, that are not connected but are overlapping. Here's a nice trick. Watch this. 
I'm going to take the white arrow, all right, which is, remember, deals with points. right? If I want to affect a point or a line on my graphic, I use the white arrow to select it. All right, I use the black arrow to grab the whole thing and move it around. Okay, cool. Just want to make sure we remember. Because this is critical that we use the white arrow for this technique. All right? We're going to use something called the join command. So what we'll do is we're looking at the top here, and there's two anchors. I know there are. Right? And if you want to ever test before you go ahead and commit things, draw a box with the white arrow around any section of a shape that you're working on. And you'll see lines, right? that's why these Bezier handles come in, and points will be selected. If you just roll over a line, that line is only selectable. I can only bend this Bezier curve, nothing else. Okay, But if I grab a point, I can stretch it and, and warp the world. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to draw a box around the very tippy top Right, where those two points overlap. Okay, this may come in handy for other things as well. Now that both sh uh, both points <clears throat> are selected, <coughs> pardon me. What I'm going to do is join them. All right. So I'm going to go up to where it says object, and then path. Okay. So object, path, and then that first uh, choice right there is join. Okay. So watch what happens when I do that. Ha, ah, nothing. Well, no, something actually really happened here. The shape completed and became a single shape. Okay. Now, let me show you if I did join where things were separated. Okay, watch this. I can draw a box that surrounds both those points. See, both anchor points are selected. And then, haha, ha, I looked at the keyboard shortcut. It is Command-J or Control-J on the PC. And look. It draws a line in between. It figures out what's in between. Notice it drew a straight line, which I don't love. That's why I overlapped the points to begin with, because I want control of these lines. So box around those two points that are overlapping, right, that are layered. And then I went object, path, join, or command J, right, if I'm into, into that. Boom. Okay. So it is now a solid shape. All right. And you now... If you follow this technique, you will build a perfectly symmetrical, gosh, I don't even know what this is. It is horrible. I didn't use reference. I went for my imagination, which, you know, is dangerous. Um, yeah, so anyway, um, that is how you would use the reflect tool, um, the pen tool, to connect two sides and reflect to get the, the, uh, the piece to, um, you know, be perfectly symmetrical with the other side of the thing that you're doing. You know, this works really well for something like this, like a bottle, right, or trying to think like um, could work for a person it could work for uh, gosh anything that is symmetrical that you that you want to draw half of it's a great technique okay all right other technique right for for people right so Alexis you um, drew picto people right so I'm gonna share with you my technique for constructing a pictogram person from scratch okay so I'm gonna go without reference Wild West here um, but bear with me so um, first thing I'm going to do is draw the head. So I'm going to choose the ellipse tool, and I'm going to hold shift so I get a perfect circle. Okay, otherwise it's just an ellipse. Okay, there it is. So that's going to be the head of our character, right? I think it's the both for male and female, and they don't have a neck. They just float in space, so cool. All right, so we just draw that, and the head is done. Way to go. All right, so what we'll do now is um, we're going to uh, build it in a few pieces. So this takes a few shapes to construct. All right. So what we're going to do is first we're going to build the main part of the body, right? The the, the torso, right? But it, it also it's one shape to start, and then we're going to add a few things. So I'll just I'll show you what it is I'm going to do. So I got that sort of like almost as wide as as the picto head um, above. Notice I'm using the smart guides. You go to view smart guides. Turn those on. They really help. Okay, and now I'm going to take the rounded rectangle because they have sort of sloping shoulders, and I'm going to draw like this, right? I tried to draw as, as close to aligning it with the top of that regular rectangle as possible. Okay, all right, there we go, right? Guy's getting shoulders. Maybe I'll make them a little wider, right? Cool. All right, and we want that rounded edge because that's that's hard to do. So the shape already does it. So I'm just really using that part of the shape for my advantage. Ultimately, what I'm going to do is combine these into one piece. Right when the time is done. So the fact that they're overlapping, not a big deal at all. Okay. So this is the fun part: the arms and legs. So here's how I make the arms and legs. 
I do them just with the pen tool and lines. Okay, and we haven't talked about lines yet, so this is a good sort of first lesson. So we'll take the pen tool, and again, we're going to draw one arm and one leg and then duplicate them. So we're not um, trying to redraw things, and that's where errors come in, right, and, and misalignment. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to draw one, two, for now, three, okay? So we're going to sort of simulate elbow, shoulder, and uh, wrist, I guess, right? We won't put as many articulating joints in here just because we might want to just... The Picto people don't have the bent wrist sort of thing. Not every, all of them do, but some do. So if you wanted to do that, you could add just an extra little section on the end. But we're just doing one, two, and three tonight, okay? All right. So we've just put some points down. So now what we're going to do is, is learn how to play with the stroke, okay? So right now I have fill um, on, right? And I'm going to use my two-headed arrow to swap them. And if you notice immediately, I get um, what looks like a rectangle, okay? So there's a special palette that's uh, in Illustrator for us, right, that, that deals with this, okay? Now, you can get at it in two ways. One is go to the black arrow like I just did, deselect the shape after you've done some points, and then select it again. And you'll notice along the top of Illustrator, you'll get... Um, these sort of ribbons, right, you see in Microsoft Word, where they have a few options. And you can see it says path, there's color, um, that sort of thing. The stroke color is black right now. The stroke uh, weight here is really important. It's set to one point. So you can hit the up arrow on that, and if you notice, the line gets thicker. right? Not taller, but thicker. So the weight is affected. All right. So for me, at this scale, I'm pretty excited to have... I'm going to do three-point stroke. Yeah, that's really good. Okay. So we can, you know, we'll adjust all these things once the time comes, but we're just getting the body parts created right now. So, all right, I created an arm, right? But if you know, um, if you've looked at the Picto people, they have rounded hands. They're just sort of like rounded piece, a lot like our, our, our piece here. Okay. Now, you're probably saying, well, we could have built it out of that shape. Why not? And the answer is yes, you could have, okay? But I like the features of the line, and I'm going to show you why. So what I'm going to do is um, I've adjusted the stroke. I want to show you the second way to get to stroke. There is uh, over on these secondary tools over here, okay? This is the stroke um, button. It's like lines, three lines of different thicknesses. So if you pop that open, you get the stroke palette. But then you got to, like, open the options, and it's, like, more stuff to do than maybe you want to. This same palette can be accessed. Whoa, all those palettes become Lamo. All these palettes can be accessed um, from up here. Okay. And specifically, what we're interested in here, um, if you click on stroke, you get the stroke panel. It just clicks down, right? Anything that has a, a dotted underline um, can be clicked and then opened, right? There are more features there. So that's a really cool thing to know about any Adobe product, is that that's what that does. The important reason we're here is we want to look at what this has to offer us. And I'm very interested in this one that says cap. All right, so if you notice, the first button um, is called a butt cap. And basically, it's just a, it's a, it, it, the cap of the line, right, meaning like it's terminal um, as opposed to the side of it, right, just this top and bottom part right now. Um, you can change the way that looks. So we want to actually click the second button, which is round cap. And if you notice, different than butt cap, it actually extends the graphic, the style of the line, beyond the vector point. So that's the main difference, because there's another um, flat cap here, but it does the same thing. It extends the line beyond the vector point, okay? So, yeah, cool, right? So butt cap is if you just need it flat, and, you know, it's just a lot of options for a lot of instances, which is really cool. All right, so we want that round cap, okay? And then the other thing that we want is we want to do where it says corner. Right now it's going to do a, a miter joint. Miter joint is an angle, which will have a, a sharp edge. So what we want to do is round joint. Okay? So um, we didn't see a difference there, but if we were to um, come in and do this, I'm going to choose the white arrow, find that point, I'm going to bend the elbow. Look at that. Okay? There it is. Right, so I've, I've made a, an arm that now has a rounded edge, right, so I can do like a shoulder if I needed to. I can make this person go woohoo up in the air, or I could just make them with their hands on their sides going or flexing or whatever. But we've got the round cap. But then also, let me go black arrow, choose, right, select, deselect, reselect, and then go up to stroke, 
and we've got now um, the round cap and then the corner. So let me put the, the regular miter uh, corner on back and you'll see, watch that, that elbow. All right, it got pointy, okay? And again, that sort of defeats the style, but you, you may want that, right? If you notice, you can sort of do a rounded thing with a, a butt edge or this. There's so many features, right? So I encourage you to click on them all, right? See what they all do. Because there may be a you know, graphic you're working on and you need that extra little thing, and then it's lo and behold inside of the stroke palette. Cool, all right, so there we go, right? We made an arm, and again, we can adjust um, the angle of it and everything. Right by dragging that middle point, but we'll put the arm on the body, okay? And we're not going to duplicate it yet, all right? In fact, oh my gosh, you know what? We don't even need to make a separate leg. Watch this. We're going to drag this guy right here. I'm not doing shift, I'm just doing option. Oh my gosh, okay? And then get this. If I want to make this leg longer or bigger, okay? So there's two ways that you can adjust this. Um, one could be that you use these transform handles, but watch what happens. Okay. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. That's a wonderful thing. It used to be that it would scale the stroke and mess it all up, and it would be horrible. But so that's a viable option, right? You can totally do that. But you want to make sure that legs are longer than arms, right? Obviously, in this case. So the stroke is unaffected here, right? So there it is, right? We've got the, the leg in there. We might want to maybe make it a little thicker. What if we did 3.5? You can do decimals, which is nice. Four might be just too thick. So you can do, you know, a, a tenth or a half of that or a quarter, whatever you want to do. And then we'll duplicate the leg. Again, I'm holding shift this time so it moves over. And then I'll duplicate the arm, okay? So this person is sort of unusually, like, thin in the middle. So we'll, we'll actually uh, expand the body a little bit, okay, and then the goal that we're going to try and do is try and get these things to line up with the, the edge of this, okay, as best that we can. All right, so because I use stroke, it, it won't, it won't, you won't get that wonderful intersect because it doesn't really have edges. There's a way you can mess with the shape so that it, it does have edges, but in this case, we want to keep that, uh, that line bent. Okay, so I want to get this close. All right, this is not a very precise way to do this, but um, it's at least good. All right, gets you closer. All right, so there we have it, right? We've got a Picto person, and now let's give him a little, little, little character, right? Now that he has movable arms and all those things, all right? Let's, uh, let's make him do the captain. Okay, there he is, right, doing the captain. Awesome, right? So anything that you want to do, you know, you can you can do um, with this, right? You can even now take the arms and watch this, just slide them up because they have the same top and bottom. You can make your guy, like, just so excited to be alive, okay? All right, there he is. So now you have a Picto person that you can manipulate and change and do all those things. You know, try and make a female version, right, and see um, if you can, you know, bring in the articulated arms and all those things. If you wanted to make a female version, watch, let me grab this whole thing, duplicate it, watch this, right? The only difference in the Picto thing between male and female is I'm selecting the point and then I'm using the arrow key and I'm counting how many times I tap the arrow. I think I did it five times and we'll go down. Look at that, female done in five seconds, all right? So of course, yeah, I want to tweak and finesse and really make these like as good as they can be. But there, there you go. That's my that's my secret, right, for doing wonderful picto people, right. So we've used the reflect tool. We've built on our skills from previous weeks as far as using um, the uh, uh, option key to uh, click copy, to hold the shift key, to have alignment. Um, there's just you know a lot of things are going to repeat themselves over and over again, right. So you really get a lot, a lot of good practice. So. But we've got a shape now built, right? We try to do that, that eyedropper bottle. We've got a Picto person that we built with stroke as well as various shapes, okay? Um, and then uh, we talked about outputting, right? Doing save for web um, for, for that, okay? So we've got one last thing to do now that I want to show you guys, and that is how to bundle up your files um, as a zip, okay? So um, I hope this goes well with the Windows side. I believe it's 
the same um, as far as how it goes. I think Windows has a built-in zip function. All right, but a quick Google search, just type in Windows 8 or Windows 7 or whatever you got, Vista, uh, hopefully not XP, um, and then uh, you can just type in, um, you know, how to stuff or zip a file. Those are sort of the terms that you use. On Mac, because we're on a Mac right now, I'll show you how it goes. So if I were to take my SVGs, right, um, I can put my finger on the command key and then do this kind of um, specific selection. So notice I grabbed all the SVGs. Uh, if you want to, you can reorganize these to go as kind right at the top, and then it will group everything by file type, which is easy to, right? So you can just then select all of those things. Um, so once those guys are selected, right, I can use command key to do individual things, or I can hold shift and then one, two, three, right? Or even get the first and the last one, and it does them all in between. All right, there's a lot of ways to do a file selection, right, on a Mac and PC. So on Mac here, I'm going to do control click while those things are selected, and I get my contextual menu. And then I've got an option here that says compress three items. So what this is going to do is this is going to make a uh, native zip file um, of those three things, okay? And there it goes, right? It generates in that same folder archive.zip. So I can rename this now, right? Mike Worth icons. And now these would be great. So when I ask you guys in the future for a zip file of all your stuff, you're not uploading individual things, right? We might have projects that have a lot of a lot of things, right? So you may want to bundle it up as a as a zip, okay? Um, so yeah, so that's the uh, that's the deal here, right? When it comes to doing that. One more time, here we go. So I can do my selection by holding the um, command. I believe control works on PC. Okay, and you get a, a group selection. You can add and remove that selection as well. Wow, look at that. I just totally opened up my own thing. Huge, huge, huge problem. All right. Or um, holding the shift key, I can do a big list of things. And I did the kind so that I grouped these up um, into the sort of relative uh, file type. If I don't use kind and I use name or date modified, you know, as my sort of, you know, search thing, that's where the uh, command key comes in handy because then I can just grab the SVGs, right? And then control click, and then here on Mac, compress three items. So Windows people, like I said, just a quick Google search. I bet there's a feature like this that just says, you know, stuff or compress or zip a file. There it is, right? Generates this archive.zip, um, and then now that file is ready to be posted right up online. Okay, it's really good. It won't shrink it a whole bunch, but it will just make it into one file. And generally, um, multiple files, when they're loose, uh, tend to become corrupted. Um, not as much as they used to, but um, like email services, for example, or my courses might do something to the file, might not like it, and it you know treats it bad, renames it on the server. So zips are bulletproof. They're the way to go. Okay, so then this can just be easily dragged and dropped onto the uploader um, forum for what it is that we have going on. So you don't need to do it for this. Um, just put your SVGs up on um, my courses. It's totally cool. But going forward, let's um, let's really be on top of the JPEGs and the zip files. Okay, so now you know, right? So now when a teacher asks you for a JPEG or if you need a JPEG of something to put into a PowerPoint and it's another file format, Open it up in Illustrator, open it up in Photoshop, and do save for web, right? So bulletproof. You'll just output what you need. It'll be ready, small, and beautiful. Cool. All right. So, guys, um, like I said, this is going to – let me pull up the camera here again real quick. Cool. So this is going to conclude this first project with, uh, with icons, okay? So what I want you guys to make sure that you do is uh, you, you've satisfied uh, what you need to do as far as turning in stuff for me. If you want to make the adjustments to things, please do it. You know, that's cool. You can always make better better images. What I want you to do is to um, head over to Noun Project, sign up your account, okay, um, and then upload your images, right? See if you actually get your stuff accepted. And then what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to put up on uh, my courses just below what we just did, right, for our... Um, our turn in for, for, the, for the piece today, uh, I'm going to put one that then has your, um, a link to your noun project uh, site, okay? So what I'm going to do, 
let's see here. Uh, we don't have class coming up. Um, b -b 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 -b. Okay. Yeah, I'll just post it here on the no class thing. That's fine. Oh, I don't want to edit. I want to go back and add a... Uh, Okay, so we're going to add an activity, and we will do a uh, forum. All right, and like I said, uh, put a, the URL that is going to be the, basically the web link. So I'm going to say post your noun project link here. Cool text arrow. Okay, so I'll say copy and paste, post the URL for your noun project page. All right, so once you make an account, you do that. So for me, it would be www.nounproject.com slash Mike Worth, I believe. Yeah, let's just see, nounproject.com slash Mike Worth. Let's just verify that that works. Indeed. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. All right. So you guys um, will need to do that. Okay. All right. You'll need to plug that stuff in. Now, how about this? Who knows how to make the hyperlink work in um, my courses? Show of hands. Good. All of you. Wonderful. All right, well, if, uh, in case you're, you're wondering, you can take any text in my courses, select it, and then this little chain shows up, okay? And you can do insert edit link. So if you click that, you get this little pop-up window, and you can just repost the link there. So you can say, I'll do the full one. I think you just do www.myournownproject.com nope, slash Mike Worth. And then the one thing I want you to do is, see where it says target? Do open a new window, okay? Because what that will do is it'll open in a new browser window as opposed to, um, yeah. Well, and I just realized I'm talking through this, and you're seeing me and not my courses. Okay, there it is. All right. So what I did, sorry. All right, I typed it in. So you guys, this is going to be in the forum. Copy and paste the URL. Uh, for your noun project page, the example, nounproject.com slash Mike Worth. So you'll do the same. So I selected that, that link, and then I clicked on the chain, and then I literally can do www.mikeworth, oh, sorry, I'm used to doing that, nounproject.com slash Mike Worth. And then this target, this is what I was talking about. So you want to click this and do open in a new window. Okay, why is this important? Well, I'm a user experience designer, so like, um, how many times have you been on a website where you'll click a link and then it ref it goes off the page to somewhere else and then it, it um, overwrites the existing web page and you're like, how do I get back? How do I get back? So in this case, because I'm taking you to a new location, I want it to pop up in a new browser window, and if you close that browser window, you're back at my courses. That's why. Okay, so that's an important thing. So we'll say, um, okay. So it says, do you want to add the required prefix? Yeah, it did. It did it for me. So, yeah, anytime you do a link, um, you didn't need to write in the prefix, the HTTP colon slash slash, which if you don't write web code, you're, you're not familiar with, um, or unless you're a web geek. Uh, but it did it. It's there. Okay, and that thing will now, it'll work. So please do this. Okay, let me make sure. Boom. Right, you'll get credit, and then save to the course. Okay, so that's going to now... Kablamo, go into the space. All right. Now, um, next week, I realize that the 4th of July is on a Friday, and we normally meet on Tuesday. So what I'll do is I'm going to post some stuff, but we won't have an official uh, class where I'm, I'm broadcasting, because I know a lot of you guys might be traveling and doing things that you need to do. Plus, we just came off of a project, so I'm, I'm going to basically post vector shape sheets for you guys to continue to work. Um, and then we're going to move into our next unit, where we're going to be talking about the combination of type and image. Okay, that's going to be something that goes on. So look here next week, not for a movie, but for um, a vector shape sheet. Okay. Oh, I saw some folks um, still having issues with getting the vector shape sheet. Let's talk about that real quick. 
All right, so the vector shape sheet is, let me find it real quick. Here it is. Okay. So when you're um, in my courses, let me turn editing off. When you're in my courses, and if you want to download a file that's not a web file, like a JPEG or um, a Microsoft file, that sort of thing, and it's an AI file, like in this case, here's what you need to do. So here's the link, right? If I click on it, right, well, for me, it wants to download it, and that's all good, okay, because I'm using Chrome. Um, if you're using Firefox, Internet Explorer, or um, Safari, or any of those things, they all have different command names, but what you'll do is you'll do control click, and you'll get that contextual menu, right, that pops down. So what I'm looking at here in Chrome is save link as, okay? So what this is going to do, save link as, is it, again, it pulls open that download, that forced download um, thing. You want to download an AI, because what happens sometimes is the browser wants to do stuff to it. It wants to show it in the browser, which it can't show AI files. Um, it wants to, you know, change it to a different format, um, and I think that might be the issue that a lot of you guys are having. Um, but yeah, so now save, right? I did that cl uh, click, uh, control click, which gave me the contextual menu. And then I'm going to do save. All right, downloads the file. All right, so um, right in Chrome, it shows you this stuff here. But I know that I uh, put it here in, um, well, my desktop at least. And if I want to open it, two ways to open the file, right, now that I've given you this. First way is, let's repeat what we did when we downloaded it. Control, click, but now on the file itself in our operating system, and we'll do open with. And uh, on the Mac, you'll see um, programs that are friendly to open this. Even preview opens AI files. It's kind of nice. So here, right, Illustrator CC. So I can click that, and then there it is. Right There's the vector shape sheet. It opens it up right in space here, which is fabulous. Okay. Cool, yo. All right, uh, let me not save and come back here. And then the other way that you can open this is um, sort of the drag and drop method, right? So if you pick this up and then drag this file down to the dock, if I roll over Illustrator, 